kind of comfortable and relaxed here. Oh, yeah. Is that how you coach, too? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Okay. Uh, what are you trying to get done for at the tail end of spring football with your position group specifically? Oh, just trying to get them to be comfortable every single day. That's the most important thing for me. I want those guys to, to know the offense inside out. I don't want them to hesitate out of the huddle and know where to line up at. I want to continue to do those things so they get comfortable and then um, and then continue to build build their resume as far as a, as a football player, you know, understanding how to finish plays, um, how to be a good teammate, and those kind of things that end, that end up the spring in the, in the right way. A lot of the, his teammates have kind of praised him, James Gilbert, uh, you know, the way he's kind of came in and, you know, what he's provided for you. How fortunate do you feel to have inherited him as a grad transfer at this point? Oh, very fortunate, you know, and, and that's no – no disrespect to any other guys on the roster like that, but you know it's it's nice to have a guy who's got had some playing experience. You know when you come into a season and you you look at it and you say, okay, if you don't have James Gilbert, you have no running back on your roster who's carried the ball in the college game. You know at the, at this level, you know it's kind of scary, but at the end of the day, you know we were able to get him and and uh, he's definitely uh, made his presence felt as far as coming in and learning the offense and continue to push himself to be a better football player. He's played at Ball State. Obviously, he hasn't played at the Power 5 level. You've coached at other Power 5 schools. I know at Minnesota you were the receivers coach. But does he compare to what a Power 5 running back is supposed to look like and play? Yeah, I think there's – I mean, I coach in the MAC, and uh, we had guys that, you know, were fortunate to get at Northern Illinois and had a running back by the name of Chad Spann who could very easily play in Power 5. And I think James had been done the same thing, very easily played at Power 5. You know, no different from the running backs at North Dakota State. They could play in the Power 5, you know. So I think it's just, you know, sometimes unfortunate of maybe a 40 time here or not tall enough here or didn't have enough weight, you know. But I think once a kid starts playing and, and see what his playing ability is, uh, the sky's the limit. And, and James has shown that, you know, he, he's played against the big boys and, and had good games. So uh, I don't worry about – uh, him not playing at this level. I just want to continue to make him the best football player he can be. At this point, we talked to a lot of the other offensive coaches, his, his offensive teammates. doesn't seem like Harry Trotter's a typical walk-on at this point. No, he's, he's done a really good job. I mean, he, the thing that's most impressive about him is how fast he's learned the offense. Uh, he's, he's gaining confidence every single day, and so uh, he's got the respect of his teammates because the way he works every day, he keeps his mouth shut and just keeps on going. Did he brag at all about getting a shout out from Lamar Jackson? No, he didn't say anything about it. I'm the one that brought it up in our in our meeting. Everybody started, you know, going, What what are you talking about? And we showed him all and they're like, Oh, you're big time, Harry and, but he didn't he just shrugged it off and, and no big deal. And then obviously they were, they were teammates, so uh, uh, that's just pretty awesome that that happened. Have you noticed any guys that are looking like obvious leaders for this offense in general at this point? Well, I think Skyler being, you know, being the quarterback, obviously that's number one. Uh, and I think that, you know, as we go, uh, Mitchell, offensive lineman, and Scott, they'll, they'll continue to, to get comfortable in being leaders. And then, you know, as James goes, I think you'll see his leadership role step up. But right now, Skyler would be the guy. And does Kansas State kind of feel definitely like home at this point? I know you've only been here a couple months. Have, have you settled in? Oh, I'm pretty much settled in. I'm in the house by myself, but. I basically live in my bedroom because I got a bed and a TV in there. But other than that, it's been good. I mean, when I go in the kitchen, obviously I go in there and cook, and then I don't stay in there very long because there's not where to sit. So, um, but it's been good. It's been really good, and and, and having friends here uh, has made it very easy. I mean, Coach Lowry and his family, and then these coaches, and we've all gotten together at different points in time since we've been here and hung out and, and spent some time together. So it's been fun. I know we've talked about it and fans follow it, so I like to at least bring it up at least once. But you're, you're a guy that doesn't really panic at all when it comes to recruiting, regardless of how things are going, because you've had a lot of experience in doing this. Yeah, it's, it's been fun. I mean, it, it, recruiting is such – it could be a drag, but if you really dive down into it and the science of it, it's just, a, you know, what your eyes see and what you trust, what you see. And um, and really, you know, do the background on the kids, and, and you'll find some kids out there that that no one else was recruiting, and go, hey, he's a pretty good player. You know, I went back and, and look at some of the notes that I've had in the years past, and some of our best players that recruited were not even on my spring recruiting list. 
because they were recruited off senior video, you know, and so sometimes you got to go back and, and dig through those notes and how you've done things in the past, and and if it really worked for you, you know, you go back to that 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 scenario. So, you know, you got to continue to just keep digging, and, and you can find kids out there that that uh, can play at any level, you know, and, and sometimes kids are getting recruited by FCS schools, and you go, well. I think he's a good player. He could probably play at a power five, you know, so you don't worry about who's recruiting him and those kind of things. So I think you just kind of keep digging and, and keep looking, and you'll find the players that you want. At this point in recruiting, the way it's sped up, senior tape's kind of obs- almost obsolete at this point. That seems like something you guys are still going to value. Yeah, it, it is. You, you have to value it. I mean, because I think at the end of the day, you got to get the kids that you want, not the kids that everybody else wants. And sometimes holding scholarships back to, to find that kid as a senior, that's okay to do it because, you know, kids get better as they get older. And uh, sometimes um, you have to – you got to take your time and, and evaluate them that way. That's okay, you know. And uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. But, you know, sometimes when everything speeds up, you, you kind of panic sometimes and all of a sudden you're throwing out scholarship offers. And – and is that the kid you really, really want, or do you, you're just trying to beat somebody on them? You know, so I think we'll, we'll be just fine. I know sometimes um, kids don't get the three star and four star and all that stuff, and then people start worrying about your recruiting class and where it ranks. Well, I've been part of those situations where we had the last ranked recruiting class, and that that senior class ended up going to an Orange Bowl. So it's not it's not one of those deals where you you got to recruit for what you want and what fits you as a football team and and go from there.